Good evening everyone and welcome back to the shop. Tonight we're working on a few coining dies. Dies to make coins or replica money. Um, now I have to start out by saying I'm not a moneyer. There are people uh, who study the creation of, of historic money, of recreation money, and uh, they do a much better job than I do. I like to say I'm a blacksmith and I just know enough to fake it. Uh, but what we will talk about tonight is how to get started, um, how you can make pretty good replica money um, without too many tools or really even too many skills. Now what I'm doing now is preparing a blank to turn into a, uh, a coining die. It used to be a coining die. I just don't use it anymore. I don't like it, I don't like it very much. It's old work. It was a, uh, a replica of a Roman quincunx, which is a type of coin. Um, but uh, what, what it is, is a piece of one inch par stock and it can be used uh, for many other coining dies to make many other pieces of replica money. What I had been doing was uh, trimming it down on the uh, on the grinder and now I have it over in the lathe and I'm truing it up now when you use a coining die if it's a piece of one inch bar uh, which is fairly standard um, not historical of course it's but it's it's fairly standard among reenactors um, and you beat it an awful lot there will be minor distortions that uh, occur in the length of the bar. It'll be bent a little bit. It'll be bowed. Um, and so it's not useful to use the lathe to try and um, match the surface of the uh, of the bar because it never will. It's, it's too worn for that. So what we'll do is we'll just make sure that the, the piece is straight, that the end, which is what I'm working on right now, is nice and flat. Flat is very important. Um, and then any other uh, minor imperfections we can um, we can fix with a file. Now, of course, if you're doing this and you don't have a lathe, most people don't. Um, it doesn't matter if the sides are perfectly round or not. Uh, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight or not. What really matters is the condition of the face. Um, and that's something, uh, we'll touch on that a little bit later, but that's something that we can fix with sandpaper. Alright, we're over the bench, and this is an old die I made of, uh, of a Jerusalem cross, and I tried to make it using only one tool, uh, a center punch tool. Uh, now you can have uh, different angles ground on your center punch, and in general you probably want a fairly wide one. Um, but. Uh, while the project was more or less successful of making a, a die with a single tool, um, I think we can do a lot better. And so th for that, we're going to use a tool like this. Um, this is called a liner tool, or at least it is in, uh, in chasing and repose. And that's exactly what we're going to use. We're going to chase in or um, work from the front to beat in uh, the pattern that I've already more or less marked out with uh, the punch work. From the center punch. So um, this is going to be a, uh, a project that we make with just two tools. So you can see we have a, a line. I'm struggling to get it into focus here, but we have a, a very clear line um, 
that's fairly wide, reasonably deep, that follows the line that uh, that I'd previously made, punched in with the center punches. It's a little wobbly, so what we're going to do is uh, chase over it very lightly. It's almost like planishing. In fact, it's exactly like planishing. We're planishing with a liner punch, and that will straighten up the line. It will also make it a little bit deeper and more uh, more prominent when it's eventually struck on a coin. And that's what we're going to keep doing over the over the whole pattern. Now I've got the cross lined in, um, and then there are the four crosses in the quarters that make uh, that make a Jerusalem cross what it is. And uh, those are next. There's the first of the quarterly crosses. It came up pretty well. And here's the rest. Now, the one in the, the bottom quadrant there is a little iffy. So what we're actually going to do is uh, grind down the face a little bit. We'll use uh, sandpaper, 120 grit sandpaper. Um, and then we'll take the face and we will drag it uh, very cleanly across the sandpaper. And I'm not sure if you can see, um, but what we're doing is we're rotating the uh, the die as we pull so any variation in uh, in the way that we hold the die uh, is taken up by the rotation we can get rid of that and then we've we've taken down uh, a little bit of the surface not much but it's enough that you will want to go ahead and follow the uh, the pattern chase over the pattern again make sure it's nice and deep and that's what we're doing right now. And you can repair the surface if you have some some blemishes on your surface. You can um, undo that. We're just tracing over the pattern. Once you have your your lines marked out, it's actually really easy to go back with your liner and um, and planish and make the the pattern deeper. Now here, um, I haven't shown you changing or I haven't shown changing my tools, but I am. I'm using a center punch now, and I'm going around the ring of dots that marks the border of the coin. And there you can see. It's much more visible now as a pattern than it was when it was just all dot work. So we're gonna strike. I'm putting uh, the die we just made in my striking anvil We've got a aluminum blank. Aluminum is not the best material, but it's really easy to come by. And I'm just using a, uh, a flat die, an un unworked die as a striker. So we're only gonna strike one side. Now, I'm a blacksmith, I like hitting hard. I like deep impressions in coins and hitting hard is a good way to get them. 
So, that came out. That's pretty visible. We'll try that again. I hit a little bit off center. Sometimes, uh, especially if you have a fresh die, uh, you can strike hard enough that the dies will, or the coins will actually get caught in the die, uh, especially on the uh, the little ring on the border. And uh, you can see that beating turned out really nice. So did the coin. I'm struggling to get it in focus, but uh, it came up pretty well. That's all for tonight. Thank you all. Bye bye.